Hi, welcome back to Midwest Magic Cleaning. My name is Midwest Cleaning Guy person. And today we're going to be cleaning the house of a woman who uh, has no hoarding issues. She doesn't have a mental illness or anything like that. It's just a regular woman who doesn't quite have that thing that I have where I see places like a puzzle and I can just jump in and start cleaning. She's like a lot of people who just doesn't quite know where to start, has looked at the clutter in her kitchen and is just a little bit overwhelmed by it, even though it's not really all that bad. It just needs a little bit of organization and some cleaning that is beyond just everyday cleaning. So I'm going to help her out with that today. And I think this is what a lot of people go through where... Um, if you catch it right now in the condition that it's in right now, it will save it from getting like super crazy into a cluttered mess. So I think we picked the right time to jump in and help with this one. Now, regular viewers will notice that Jason is not with me today, and that's because he's got like this nasty virus that's been going around my area of the Midwest. So he's home. He should be back on the next video, hopefully. Um, I let him know that, like, I don't agree with your decision to have a virus, but I'll support you regardless. I mean, if you want to be a piece of filth and be sick at home because you're so weak as, as a human, then that's your decision, and I'll support it fine. But, like, if I even think for even a second that you're faking your illness or that you're just doing it because it's fun, like having an illness because it's it makes you laugh, I will slap a figure four on you until you tap, son, because that's how we settle things in the Midwest. That's how we get rid of problems. I don't put up with problems. If you've got a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Check out the hook while my deal. So I'm going to take this stuff off the top of the uh, little China cabinet dealie. And at first I just used a Swiffer dusting pad to get off the, the old dust because there was a lot of it on there. And now I'm going back over it with uh, my APC, which is 70% isopropyl alcohol, 30% water, and a few drops of Dawn dish soap. And I'm just going to scrub those down. These, these have um, dust and also nicotine on them. She's a smoker. And I was myself for many, many, many years. And so I understand how quickly this stuff can build up. But we're just going to wipe down all the glass bottles with my APC. And then I'm just setting them on my jacket because I was too lazy to move it. And also the black background makes the glass kind of stick out a little bit more. So it's a little bit easier to see. And she has a lot of glassware in the house. There's some of it that I didn't get to. Some decorations that are on top of the cabinets and stuff like that. But I wanted to get these because they're kind of a focal point in the room. So after I get these wiped down, I'm going to put them back in, in some sort of symmetrical order. So I'm kind of mirror imaging the right side and the left side. So when we get to the kitchen itself, I always like to start by picking out one area that can become my workspace and clearing off everything from it. Then I will clean the surface with, with Mr. Clean 
And I want to get this surface completely done because what I want to do is I'm going to then move back all of my cleaning supplies to this area and that becomes my central hub. That becomes my workstation. Part of the reason for doing this is it gives me a surface to put all my cleaning supplies, but the other reason is it prevents me from putting things back on it. Random items in the kitchen. So I'm forced to not only move the other items on the counters, but I'm also forced to put those away. I can't just turn around to the island and set them down and say, I'll get it in a little bit. So that's one of the tips that I wanted to uh, bring up that when you're cleaning a kitchen like this, especially one that's not, you know, overwhelmingly cluttered or whatever, one of the things you want to do is pick a spot and just move something. Get like pick a spot that you want to be cleared off and start moving the things off of it and just put them literally anywhere else. The sheer act of moving those things from one surface to another clears up the area that you're wanting to clean and it forces you to do something with the items that you just moved. If you start doing that and work your way around the room, you'll notice that it's just naturally getting cleaner and less clutter as you go. So that's what I do. I start moving items, then I'll clean the surface underneath it, and then I'll decide among the items that I just moved, is there anything here that can be put somewhere else, or is there things that needs to be on the counter. For instance, like a Keurig, that needs to be on the counter because she uses it every day and it needs to be accessible. But like this mini crock pot thing that she's got up here hardly ever gets used. So it was out there for decoration's sake and for the fact that she had just used it not long ago, but she just never got around to putting it back inside of a cabinet. So that's what I'm going to do. The whole idea for these kitchen cleanups is the less you have on the counters, the better it looks. Pick a few items that can be used for practical purposes like a microwave and a Keurig and then a couple pieces for decoration. Everything else should go in a cabinet somewhere. For instance, she had six live dogs on this counter off camera and I put them all in, in the cabinets with her plates. So there is now a cabinet with plates and also live barking dogs and one wolf. All the pans and stuff that are on the stove, those are all clean, so that made it real easy for me. I just put those away, and then I just have to figure out a place to put the crock pot and this other, like well, I think that may be an air fryer. But instead of trying to figure out a place to put them right off the bat, I move them off the stove so I can clean the stove, and that forces me to figure out a place for them after this surface is clean. So in other words, they're now in a waiting area. Then I'll decide if anything else needs to go back onto the stove, which in most cases, nothing goes on a stove. It turns out that the air fryer looks better and is more practical to the right of the stove, so I ended up leaving it there. Now I'll take a razor scraper, and I'm going to go around each of those burners because it has what all of these types of stoves have, where just over time it gets a little bit of uh, burnt on food and a little bit of hard water stains and things like that that build up around the burner. I soaked that down with Mr. Clean and then took the razor scraper to it to get rid of that. Then I'll clean the entire surface with Mr. Clean. Then I'll go back over that with my APC. And that alcohol-based APC will be what will clean the stove off sanitize it and remove any streaks that happen while you wipe it down. That's what makes it shiny. So suck it. Now I'll use a regular microfiber towel to clean it off and then I'll follow right behind that with an ultra fine microfiber towel and that's what gets rid of the streaks. Look how shiny that is. It's shining right in your face. I don't even care. They call me shiny, shiny Johnny. 
back in Milwaukee. Johnny Shine Stove is what they used to call me. Now this is another reason to move things on a counter is that over time things build up behind all the little decorations and trinkets that you've got on there. So not only do you move it to clean off the counters, but you move it to reveal dirt that you didn't know existed. So behind this one, there was an old like mouse poison trap thingy. And then there was a whole bunch of like sunflower seeds, which are what she feeds to her pet birds. You'll see pictures of those later. They're pretty awesome. So there we go, we move everything off the counters and then we'll just Mr. Clean that sucker right on down, right in its counter face. Call this counter striking. Now about the time that I was working on this, Jason was still at home being a giant wuss, but fortunately I was able to completely ignore that and just continue to clean as if he was a completely normal person who wasn't a giant wuss. Now I'm gonna go over that with my APC and that again is to sanitize it and to uh, bring back a little bit of shine. Then when all that's done, you can put things back. And what I like to do is as I'm putting things back, I'll wipe them down so that each individual item also gets cleaned. So like there's a bunch of dust and stuff on that bread box and on the like sugar and flour containers and things like that. Since I moved them and I know I have to move them back, as they pass through my hands, I can wipe them down and it just becomes a part of the assembly line. If you ever have these little cooking books, they always are at an angle because they're in kind of like a binder sort of deal. If you alternate the way those face, they will line up in a way that makes them not slope down and slide off of each other. Now I could make this look way, way more decorative, but this is a very small kitchen and she doesn't have a lot of space. So a lot of the things on this counter are there for practical purposes. Like these are the things she uses daily. And so I could find cabinets for these, or I could replace a lot of what you're seeing here with decoration rather than things like bread boxes and stuff like that. But the lack of room prevents me from putting all that away. And it also adds another step to her routine in the morning. So if she's got to go through two or three different cabinets to get to the things that she uses all the time, it kind of makes more sense to leave them on the counter and just put them in some sort of symmetrical lined up way so they don't look all cluttered. Now she will have to open the cabinets in order to take all of the dogs and the one wolf out in the mornings, but otherwise they're fine in the cabinets. Now what I'm doing here is using liquid gold, which is kind of a miracle cleaner. It's a like a wood oil type of thing that is there for aesthetic purposes. It rehydrates the wood and it puts a gloss, uh, like a glossy shine on cabinets, uh, tables, uh, nightstands, things like that. And it will hold that shine for like a week or two. So that stuff's really good. It's not uh, expensive at all. I found mine at Walmart and I just wipe down the cabinets once I'm done, you know, with the cleaning. And it's, again, it's more of an aesthetic thing, but man, it looks really good when you get it done. I mean, you can see the difference between the cabinet on the left and the one on the right, even on video. So like in real life, the difference was pretty dramatic between those two but even on video you can tell there's a pretty significant difference now I have to be careful around cabinets like this because one time I was cleaning a place and I accidentally flexed my arm and all the cabinet doors shot off like a cabinet geyser I don't know what caused that but I'm, I'm just assuming that it was me flexing that did it
Now I'm going to use that same liquid gold on this little, uh, I, I call it a china cabinet. I don't know what it is. I know there's names for things like that, but I never needed to know those names before. So, so I'm going to just call it a kitchen wood thing with glass also. So I'm going to polish the kitchen wood thing with glass also with liquid gold. And then I will jump up into the glass part of it and clean that with my alcohol based ACP. And it doesn't take that long to do, but it really, really makes a huge difference. Like you can actually see my reflection in the front of that. That's pretty crazy. Now, right about the point where I'm wiping this part of the glass down is when I pictured Jason crying because he's not as strong or as awesome as me. But I powered through that and I went ahead and just used my microfiber towel to wipe down the glass and then my ultrafine to dry right behind that to prevent the streaking. There's no amount of microfiber towels that are strong enough to wipe away Jason's wussitude. Like he's going to have that forever and there's nothing that microfiber fiber towels could do about it. If you or someone you know is a giant wuss like Jason, it's totally fine to be that way. Like you don't have to do anything about it. Just understand like who you are. Now this little table thing, it's more like a bar that separates the kitchen from the living room. This is like a veneer that's on top of here. So rather than use liquid gold on this, I'm going to use pledge. That'll just help me clean it off, get the dust off of it, and give just a little bit of a shine to it. But if I use liquid gold on this, there's no real wood to absorb the liquid gold. And so it'll just sit on top and be greasy. And these are also things that she uses daily. So I'm just going to put those back out there in sort of a line. Um, I'm not a great decorator. Otherwise, I could have taken some of the other stuff that I pulled off of the cabinets and put on there and just made it look all interesting, but I, I'm just not good at that. I don't know whether that's my autism or if Jason is rubbing off on me with his total lack of creativity because he's such a bad person. Now I'm going to use the same pledge furniture polish on this. This is like a little potato and bread bin. It's a really cute little piece, but it's not really what you'd call finished. Like it doesn't have varnish or anything on it. It's just wood that's been stained. So I could put liquid gold on here, but it would absorb too much. Like I don't want to put a polish on here that's going to make the wood swell or have a, a possibility of making it discolor. So I'm just going to use pledge just to wipe it down, get all the dust off, get any extra little crud off of it and then move on. So this week, um, in fact, just a few minutes ago, I completed the first steps of opening up memberships for the channel. And one of the reasons that I'm doing that is people keep asking me if I've got a Patreon or a place to donate or whatever, and I don't have any of those. However, if I have memberships on YouTube, 
that would be a thing that operates much like Patreon. So I, I'm charging, I think I told it four ninety nine a month, and what that'll get you is an extra video per week, and it'll be done vlog style. It'll be more of a personal thing about me rather than about, you know, the cleaning. And I'm basically going to use that sucker just the same way that people would use Twitter or TikTok or Facebook or whatever. I'll just post update videos. Um, anytime I find something interesting or just want to ramble, I'm going to put that in the members-only section. And the money that I make off of that can help do things like, you know, support gas. So for instance, I drove uh, 45 miles to do this one kitchen today. So that that was not a small amount of gas. <laughs> and then, you know, 45 miles back. So 90 total miles to do this one room today. And the intention will be once I get enough money coming in from YouTube, I will be doing a second video for everyone. So it'll be two cleaning videos per week plus the extra video for the members only thing. So we'll see how that goes. Right now I've got the defaults turned on for the um, default badges and stuff, but I'll be creating new custom ones for just the channel members, uh, some badges and emojis and whatever. And if you're a member, that would be totally awesome. But if you're not, that's totally fine. You can be a Jason and you can suck it. Um, but And I won't think any less of you. I mean, I will, but I will say, I would like to say that I, I won't think less of you. Anyway, thanks for watching, and you can all suck it.